Hi everyone, I'm Jeanette with the Bebo Vintage Designs. Welcome to today's video. In today's video, I am going to show you how I painted this very simple painting using watercolor, and this is for the beginner. I know that when I first started with watercolor, um, I wanted to create something that I thought was pretty and that was simple enough for me to create not having much experience with watercolor. So I thought that you might enjoy doing this little painting. It really is simple and cute. But before we get to that, I wanted to share with you my most recent painting. This is my friend's Cane Corso. And I just finished this painting, um, I would say maybe just a couple of days ago. I'll be sending it to them as a gift. This was very challenging to paint, but it was a lot of fun. So, okay, now let's get to this painting. The colors that I'll be using, well, first I'll tell you that I'm using my Muno pan paints. And the colors I'll be using are yellow ochre, raw umber, ultramarine blue, Van Dyke brown, brown red, and light red. So I have my little ceramic palette here and I've already gone ahead and mixed some colors and I'm just going to add a little water to them to reactivate them in here. And um, I'm using Arches cold press paper and I've taken my sheets and I've cut them into quarters so that um, I can do these small paintings. And if you have Arches watercolor paper and you are afraid to use it because it is expensive, I suggest you cut it into quarter sheets and um, use the paper. <laughs> Don't be so afraid. Okay, um, the brushes I'll be using are my Aqua Elite Princeton. This is by Princeton and it's a mop brush. It's 5 8 inch. I'll be using my silver black velvet round this is a size eight and i have my um silver black velvet script this is a size one so the first thing oh well, and i have some water and paper towels of course so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wet down our paper and you just want to make sure that the paper is glistening you don't want it sopping and you don't want any puddles so just go back and forth with your brush, making sure that the entire sheet of paper is covered and allow it to soak in a little bit before you take the paint to it. And what I do is I dab my brush on my paper towel to collect some of the excess water because you just want the paper to glisten. Again, you don't want any puddles and you want to make sure that the water is evenly spread. And it's best to give it just a moment to absorb, for the paper to absorb some of the water, because if you start painting on the paper before it has a chance to absorb, your paint kind of like floats on top and can do some little weird things. So I prefer to wait just a little bit. In the meantime, I am going to take my size eight and I'm going to activate that um, ultramarine blue because that will be the color of my sky. And it's fairly diluted, it's not heavy. And I'm just going to start running my brush across the top and I'm going to bring it down, letting it fade a little bit. Then I'm going to pick up a little bit more. I want it darker towards the top. And then I'm kind of blending it out. As you can see, it's getting lighter. And then I'm going to pick up my, um, what color is this? Is it uh, yellow ochre? And I'm going to start from the bottom and maybe pick up a little of the Van Dyke Brown. I want it darker at the bottom. And I'm going to start blending it upwards. Use a little bit more of the Van Dyke Brown at the bottom. Okay. 
going to clean my brush and I'm going to wipe some of this away, soften it up a little bit. And then while the paper is still wet, I'm going to make sure that my brush is nicely wet. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown and I'm just going to lay my brush down. And I'm going to let it bleed into the paper. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the um, yellow ochre and I'm going to do the same just here and there. And this is the light red. I'm going to do the same. And then I have the brown red. I put a little bit of the darkness down here with the Van Dyke brown. And I actually have a little bit of black in my palette. So I'm going to make, mix a little bit of the brown red into it because I want it to be a little bit darker. And I'm just dabbing in some color down here. I want it to be a little bit darker down here, especially in the corners. Okay. Now I'm going to use my script brush and I'm going to go into the different colors and just create some lines like grass almost. So I'm just flicking my wrist and bringing that color up from the bottom. And I'll go into each color and do the same. And you want to make sure that they're going in different directions. And I'll also pick up some of that yellow ochre and the raw umber and do the same. And you want this to blend softly into the background. And now what I'm going to do is to connect some of these little blobs that I did with like a little stem. Okay, so now we're going to let this dry. I'm going to use a blow dryer. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now my paper is pretty dry to the touch. So I am going to, um, I need to mix a little bit more of the yellow ochre and raw umber. So I'm just going to grab some from my palette and I'm actually going to just mix the two colors together and throw that in there real quick. All right, so I am going to take the size 8 brush and I'm going to dip it into the um, combination of the yellow ochre and raw umber. And I have it, um, it's a thicker consistency. So I'm going to use the tip of my brush and I'm hoping you can see this. And I'm just going to start flicking it and creating these little tops and I know there's a name for them but I can't think of it right now. So I'm just flicking and I'm starting with the lighter color and then I'm picking up a little bit of the darker color towards the bottom and I'm going to let that blend in. And there's our first one. Then I'm going to go into another color start flicking. You can make these as big or as little as you want. I'm going to use a combination of sizes. Okay. 
and I like using the darker color towards the bottom. And you can see I'm just using the very tip of my brush. These brushes have a really nice point to them. So if I start at the center and flick out towards the sides, I get exactly what I, the shape that I want. I'm going to mix a little bit darker brown. I want the consistency of my paint to be a little heavier, not as watery. You can see there really isn't much to this, just a little flicking. And I'm picking up a little bit more of the brown, make it just a little bit darker. Then you can switch the combination of colors to make it a little bit more interesting. And what it, the colors that we put down while the paper was wet, it almost gives it um, a look as though they're in the background. That faded, misty look. I'm going to make this one go off the page. So continue adding these until you're happy. And I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back. All right, I've painted all the ones that I want and I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to use my script brush and I'm going to pick up some of the colors and start drawing stems or rather painting stems on these. And I'm going to use different colors. And I want them to all go in different directions. I don't want them to all look the same. I want to make sure they're all connected to a stem. And then I am going to pick up with my script brush, I'm going to go into each of the colors and I'm going to start at the bottom of the painting and flick my brush to create some grass. And I'm going to do this with all the different colors. So I find that it works best if I hold my brush towards the top of the handle and just flick it. Pretty simple. And of course you can choose whatever colors you like to do this painting. It doesn't have to be the colors that I chose. I just happen to like this combination. It looks a little fallish. 
even though it's the middle of the summer, or nearing the end of the summer, unfortunately. I think I drew a stem for that one. So I'm trying to get some to be taller. So I'm going from where the flat, um, these heads are, these weed heads are, and going up from there. I don't want a line to be in the middle of the paper, not connected to anything. So by doing it behind one of these heads, it um, kind of hides that a little bit. It makes it look more like it's connected. And I'm still mixing a little bit of this black that I had on my palette with some of these colors to darken them up a little bit, especially in the foreground. I want it to be a little bit darker. And that is it. You can add as much of this little grass as you like. But make sure it's nice and wispy. And then my favorite part of the painting is removing the tape. This is washi tape and it works very well on watercolor paper. I've never had it rip the paper. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this little video and that you give this a try. If you do, please um, show me how you did. I post my videos on my Facebook page, Vivo Vintage Designs, as well as YouTube. And um, if you go on my Facebook page, you can drop your painting in the comment section of the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your interaction is very helpful and your support is greatly appreciated. Also, there'll be a full list of all the products used and links in the description portion of this video. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great weekend. Bye.